Hey guys, hope you're all doing okay. Welcome to the complete guide to Rio Jinx emulator. As always, this is going to be a detailed video and I'm gonna put timestamps in the description. I do, however, recommend watching the whole video to get the most out of this emulator. To give you guys some context, these are the specifications for the emulator. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. I talked about switch emulation in my Yuzu guide, but to sum it up, despite of it um, being a handheld console, it has very powerful hardware, so the emulation is a little bit tricky and it requires uh, some specification, but <laughs> it's no PlayStation 2 emulation, I can tell you that much. Um, I've been doing a lot of comparisons between Yuzu and Ryu Jinx, and after a lot of testing with um, a couple of titles, and a lot of uh, AAA titles, I can say it with utmost confidence that Ryu Jinx is not as um, performance oriented as Yuzu is. So with Yuzu, I got a lot more performance and um, it has a lot more features, but Ryu Jinx can run pretty much any game. It can get you pretty much into any game, past menus and into in-game, which is pretty, pretty epic but um, the fps is gonna be um, a little bit inconsistent but still it's a very um, significant achievement it can crash in some games but um, if you're not having luck with any of your games um, in yuzu you can try them out in Jing. so that's um, one of the perks of competing emulators in the same space um, so to get started with Rio Jinx, we're just gonna download that and to download Rio Jinx There are two methods to download it. One is the pre-compiled release So if you just write Rio Jinx download and then we can download it um, Rio Jinx.org We can download it from, uh, from here. So these are the automatically pre-compiled builds but if you want to compile the builds for yourself um, you can do it by installing the net framework 5.0, but I don't recommend doing that because um, We're only concerned with performance here So if it's not going to give you that um, performance, then we're not going to do it because it's absolutely um, Not worth it. So it's downloading now. It's going to be a zip file um, I already have it. So I'm not going to download it and after you extract that zip file, you're going to have the contents like this. So these are all the contents. Um, it's a little bit messy, 605 items in the same um, folder. They could have made some header files to make it a lot more cleaner. So you would only have like four or five folders and files um, in one folder. But I guess they didn't. Um, and it, it, this approach actually has a... Um, an advantage over Yuzu because all of these files are here. So you're, if you get an error, you can be really specific about which error is it. Um, but in case of Yuzu, if you get an error, it's, it's only gonna point towards the header files, the file that contains all other files. Um, but, but in this case, we can be really specific. Um, so after the downloading and extraction of the compressed file, you're gonna have all these files and here's our executable. So we're just gonna double click it and hopefully it will launch. And yes, it did. So before we jump into the UI, I just wanna take a moment to look at the log here. So this is our time entry, um, our application event, and then it says application princess system info. So this is the Ryujinx version and this is our log. It's gonna tell us everything, um, everything that the emulator is doing. That's our operating system. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's good to have this enabled because if you get an error or something along those lines, you can always look at your log and see what's going on. Um, so let's jump into the UI here. So in file, we have load application for files. So you can load um, XE, XEI or NSP file um or any other application that you might have but if you have unpacked game so if you manage to extract the contents of your game um, you can load the unpacked game from here um, so the thing is when you're extracting the contents from your switch title so let's say you have a switch and you also have a cartridge so when, when you're actually extracting the title there are two methods that's why it's giving us two options 
we can either load one file which is the application or we can load load the unpacked file and you can actually find the link in the description um, to how uh, to extract games from the cartridges and if we want to open reusing folder it's already open but um, there's actually one more reusing folder it's going to be in our local and in our ta uh, roaming directory i believe and in that folder we're going to put our keys file so you know the keys from nintendo switch it has a mechanism where it can detect whether a game is legit or not um, whether the console is running any counterfeit product so that's why it, it comes with a key so if you don't have a key it's going to give you an error that um, missing keys or something along those lines so make sure that you have the keys you can extract it from your nintendo switch you can also download it but as always i don't recommend it because it's unrecommended it's it's not the legal way to go about things open logs folder you can open your log folder so if you want if you are um, supporting these guys on patreon and you want to get some help or you want to get some help from the community you can just open your log folder and follow their instructions so you can get a potential solution to your problem and then exit is pretty self-explanatory in options we have intro full screen set games in full screen enable gui columns so these columns that that are right here and then we have settings which i'm going to go into in just a second and in actions we don't have any actions because we don't have uh we don't currently have a game playing at the moment so that's why um it's not it's grayed out it's not actually accessible right now and in help we have check for updates so when you launch your emulator after a while or if you play it every day um, you're going to notice uh, occasionally it's going to uh, prompt you for an update and you can update it and in, in about you can just um, get some information about the emulator and in tools we have install firmware so install a firmware from xci or zip install a firmware from my directory so this is an additional step uh, for reusing because in yuzu you don't really have to install a firmware you just have to have the keys and you're good to go but in here you have to install a firmware otherwise some of your games won't boot and I already have installed a firmware but just to show you you just click on here and then you click the fire so uh, this is the firmware that I have right here the zip file I can double click it and it, it's gonna install so and I've already installed it, so no problem. And these are my two games, New Horizons and Super Mario Maker 2. So let's jump into settings. In general, we have enabled Discord Rich Presence, which is a feature in Discord and lets you integrate your gameplay a little better. I've never used Discord and um, I've never used this feature, but if some of you guys watching might have a Discord, um, and you're running things on emulator so it's a good feature to be aware of check updates on launch yep show confirm exit on dialog hide cursor on idle so if you you don't move your mouse um, it's gonna hide your cursor so in game directory we can add some game directory use custom theme and um, I think you can download custom theme from uh, for reusing I think from reusing website and then in, in input we have all the players player one to eight and then handheld so it's it's like your joy cons you can configure them and if i go into configure we have all keyboards these are all of our profiles that we can use and i just use all keyboards because this is the best options with utmost compatibility and you, you can select your buttons here everything and then how sensitive do you want it to um, do you want the gyroscope sensor to be uh, to really emulate the joy cons and in here we can add profile load them or remove them for each of your games and enable docked mode this is pretty direct keyboard access um, system we have USA you can choose any any system that you want uh, it doesn't really matter it depends on your title which title is it then we have american english utc um, enable vsync we gotta disable that because it can take a toll on your performance but if you get terrible screen tearing effects please enable that 
so you won't get those effects enable pptc profile persistent translation cache of course enable that um, only on a few number of cpus it can cause some problems but overall a general rule of thumb is leave it enabled um, it's a good option to have and it's a performance related option so just leave it enabled fs integrity checks um, so this is a pretty important option because in some of your titles you might get an integrity check error so in that case you might want to disable that so you don't get that error but as you know if your games are legit and they are probably dump, uh, properly dumped from your cartridge you can just leave it enabled and then audio backend is our open al we're going to leave it to that um, and in hacks we have ignore missing services only enable that if you get an error regarding any service so it might prompt you that um, a certain service is missing so you can bypass that check by checking this option and in graphics the meat and potatoes of this tutorial enhancement we have enable shader cache and always enable shader cache whether you're on a low-end pc or a high-end pc it doesn't really matter just leave it enabled so that's how we can get the pre-compiled shaders from our hard drive or our ssd to run it in the emulator and i'm actually surprised that there are, aren't many options in here um, because compared to yuzu it, it has a lot more and it, it supports vulcan as well um, but I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this one only supports OpenGL, which is good for accuracy, but if you have a low spec PC, it's not really the way to go. Anti-scope filtering is set to auto. This is definitely the way to go, unless you wanna set it to 2X. That's up to you, but I set it to auto, so it will determine your specifications and see what scale you should set it to but if you want to cap it at 2x then do that there's nothing wrong with that but let's leave it to auto for now and native resolution scale uh, it's 720p uh, 1080p this is the best option please don't select 2x or 3x because um, to me this emulator is still in its development phase and it has a lot more iterations to go before we can get competent performance on mid and PCs at 2x. So that's why I just leave it at 720p and then aspect ratio is pretty self-explanatory. 16, 9. Now, in some cases, you can actually download some shaders. So instead of you playing the whole game and just you playing several hours uh, to just get your shader bank in order, you can actually download them. And if you want to specify a path, you can specify it in here uh, but it's not recommended some people consider it piracy but i'm not going to go into that and in logging we have all of our logging functions enabled um, so what i do is i disable most of them because it's an additional task it's an extremely minor task like it's it's not going to take that much of a toll but I just have um, a force of habit where I just disable all of logs because it is an additional task. Um, you can keep them enabled. It's not really going to make a much of a difference. But I personally just <laughs> disable all the logs. Um, and then in developer options, it says will reduce performance. Um, of course it can because if you want aggressive logging, logging every single event and you can even log your metadata. So it's the data about data and it can definitely reduce your performance. But if you're trying to track down a bug and uh, the community might tell you to enable it, then you can enable it if you're seeking some help. Yep, so that was pretty much it for this emulator. And now I'm gonna try to boot a game and see if we can boot it. Animal Crossing. 
let's see what happens it's gonna be pretty slow because I'm also recording um, this video and hopefully it can boot <laughs> yeah it might take a while it actually takes a lot longer than I um, expected so now the actions um, tab is enabled and in, in, in here we have stop emulation so I'm just gonna stop it because it's taking forever and now I'm gonna tell you guys about the recommended settings for low to mid end PCs so let's go to options here settings and I just disable that in input you can configure however you want disable vsync disable this it's an additional task enable shader cache yep and then in logging save and there's not um, not many options in here and if you if you're on a high-end PC you can um, that that option doesn't really make sense so just leave it disabled and you would enable vsync uh, to get a little bit more accuracy and enable FS integrity checks enable shatter cache and if you have something like RTX 30 series or 20 series even in, and you have the i i9 10900k then you can select some of these it's up to you but it's it's a good idea to try at least and save and close so that was it guys um, it, it's not as long as my other emulator tutorials uh, but there are not really that many options to go into it it doesn't it's it also doesn't really support the customized game options it does in the profile uh, controller menu but not in the game menu anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial thank you so much for watching catch you guys later